Hi there. Today we're looking at learning world graphs to accelerate hierarchical reinforcement learning by Wenling Sheng et al. from Salesforce Research. Uh, this work is based <coughs> in the world of reinforcement learning and especially hierarchical reinforcement learning. So in hierarchical reinforcement learning, the idea is that in order to perform a task like in this case, they perform all of their experiments on mazes like this. So imagine you have this maze and this red thing here is the, the agent and the goal is the green square. And the gray things obviously are walls and the black things are everywhere the agent can move. The agent can always move one step in, in any direction that it wants and that isn't blocked by a wall. Um, so in order to fulfill such a task, the agent needs to take many, many steps, like go here, 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 here. Each one of those is a step. Uh, in addition, this specific maze has a, an additional property, namely that there's a locked door here. And first you need to pick up the key to uh, basically to open the locked door. So in order to reach the goal, the agent needs first to pick up the key then open the door, then go to the goal. And each one of these, it has to traverse many, many steps. So the idea in hierarchical reinforcement learning is that you have two parts to it, to the agent. So your agent, which is this entire box here, is divided into what's called a manager and a worker. And this is a divide. So what the manager sees, the manager sees basically, it, I, I do an example here, they do it differently, but the manager could see large, could see the world basically only in these large chunks, right? And um, it, it doesn't really care what is in, or it cares what is in the chunks, but it doesn't distinguish points within the chunks. It just knows about these these chunks basically and what the manager will say oh first I need to go to this chunk here then because there's the key in this chunk and then I need to go to this chunk here because there is the door and then I need to go to this chunk here because there's the goal so the in the view of the manager which has a very high level view of the world is the the, the action sequence is down here over here then over here those are like three actions. That's a pretty simple. And then the manager would pass this information to the worker and it would say, hey worker, please go to this state here. Please go to the first state. And then the worker would be tasked with basically moving the individual steps to go not to the final goal, but only to go to that chunk and then in that chunk the worker would go to the key and then once it has the key the manager would say good job now please perform the second action which is go to to this chunk here so the second action that the worker would so you basically get the idea whoops I am doing something here um, you get the idea that the oh, I'm creating text boxes that the worker and the manager work together and that the manager has a high level view of the world and then the worker can basically uh, execute the actu actions that the manager has decided on in a fine-grained way. So this is gives you several advantages, namely the manager can plan high level and far away things and then the worker really only has to care about its close neighborhood because each step the manager proposes is fairly short range so the worker can implement it. Um, they do this in a kind of different way. So let's actually start from the back uh, from of this paper which is uh, I find is a bit more explanatory and it makes a bit more sense to look at it. What they propose is to learn a world graph. So in a world graph what is a world graph? A world graph consists of, of two things. First, a set of states, which is the, are the blue states here. So all these blue states, which are so-called pivot states or important states. So these are states in the world 
that are very important, um, determined by some measure, right? So th these are basically states that um, look at look at where they are. They're often at like narrow passes. You see here, here they're at these narrow passes. So basically, if you if you reach those states as an intermediary goal, then you can basically go a lot of places from here. So these are very, let's say, powerful states. And these states are connected by a neighborhood graph. So basically, which states of these are close to each other? And for example, here you would connect, of course, those two because they're neighbors. Those you would probably connect those. So I'm, I'm attempting to um, to kind of draw the world graph, you, c you might connect those. It doesn't need to be like a tree, it can be um, like such. Yeah, so you see that the, the graph kind of takes shape. These are fairly reachable. So whenever a, a, a node in the graph, whenever one of these important states is fairly easily reachable by some other state, it's designated as a neighbor. Um, so with that, with this world graph here, this is what you get. You get an abstraction. Basically, you get a set of states with connections between them that says how easy or hard is it to reach from one state to the other. If you have these things, then you can really easily imagine a hierarchical reinforcement learning algorithm that now in, that incorporates this information. Namely, the manager will only use the important states to plan. So for example, if the goal, the goal isn't drawn in here, but let's say the goal is here and then the door, um, the door is here. It's a locked door here. And then the key, let's draw in the key. Come on. Okay, this doesn't want to. All right, the, the key is somewhere, let's say here. There's the key, the key is this. All right, then the, no, let's put the key farther away. Um, come on, door here. Um, I'm off with the colors now, <laughs> and key here. All right, so what would the, the manager do? The manager would then say, ah, okay, the key is here. So this would be a good state to reach of my important state. The manager is only allowed to go important states, right? So the manager says, because it has the graph, right? It says, aha, this state is easily reachable from, uh, let's say this state, and this state is easily reachable from this state. So it plans go here, then go here, and then go here, then get the key, right? This is a, a kind of a micro action that is not in the important state. Then I need to, you know, go here. This is reachable from this state that's reachable from this state and from this state and that's reachable from my origin so from the key then next go here go here go here go here and then open the door and then of course go here and solve the the task um, the worker then would only ever need to implement the following it starts here and it says, aha, I need to go here. What do I need to do? I need to go, for example, down and over. And now once I've done this, I need to go here. So I need to go right, down, right. So you see the, the worker only ever has to care about going from one hop to the next hop, making it um, really easy for the worker. While the manager only has these blue states available, which makes its search space uh, much more um, much more condensed and much more, um, much more overviewable, especially with the nodes in between the world graph. So that's if you have the world graph, right? If you have this set of states and how important or how easily they're reachable, reachable they are between each other, you can very easily do a reinforcement learning approach that uh, that is hierarchical, has the manager plan on the world graph, has and then has the worker implement the fine-grained actions. And there is already a method that does this, 
Uh, this paper here uses feudal networks, so we won't go into that later. I'm just saying it's, it's pretty easy if you have those things. So the real question is, how do they learn the world graph? Um, and what they do is the following, and they describe it here in kind of this, oh, sorry, this way. What they want to, ar to finally learn is a uh, prior that tells them for a given state how important it is it and that's a, a beta prior a beta distribution is, is a continuous approximation on a on a kind of a binary zero one variable um, so how do they do it they use an, an lstm to encode trajectories so these are trajectories from kind of rollouts of a policy um, and then the the LSTM encodes it and for each step it outputs this um, posterior over the what's called these latent variables here they say how important is a state so these are the posteriors whereas this over here is the prior and the posterior of course only makes sense in context of a trajectory um, that's why the ultimate decision happens for the prior because the state needs to be important or not important to any trajectory. So what they do is they roll out policies and they have certain methods of um, of doing this. So um, they have a, they have a random exploration, they have curiosity goals, but they also train this continuously. So they update it continuously via this what's called a, a goal condition policy. And what a goal condition policy is basically is you put the agent somewhere in the maze. Actually, let's use this maze over here. Um, you put the agent somewhere in the maze. Let's say here. You, um, for example, make a bunch of ran make a random exploration. Let's say here. So you know these two things are reachable, and then you train the agent. Say go from here to here. Right. This is your goal now. And the agent tries to kind of reconstruct this random walk to there and um, you can ref so so this is how you train an agent to go basically go from any two well reachable states to each other right from here to here and so on now you, you won't train it to go directly from here to over here because a random walk would be very hard for a random walk to find its way over there um, but what you end up with is is somehow an agent that is able to reach close by states and that's exactly what the worker is supposed to do right here and um, so of of these trajectories you can then unroll them and uh, decide on the kind of on these on these pivotal states so how do you do that and this is where this top part here comes in so down here you input the trajectory and you output how important is each state all right and now you see in this example here the light color means that the lstm decides this state isn't important and the darker orange color means the lstm decides this state is important so what you do next is the states where it decides it is important and notice the beginning at the end are always important um, it feeds to a second LSTM as an input you see here 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 so in this case of these um, two, three, four, of these six states in the trajectory three are important namely the start the end and this one here where the LSTM decides hey that's important um, that goes into a second LSTM which is generator so this here is an encoder and this here is a decoder and what it does is it decodes the sequence of actions right uh, here given nothing just given this it decodes a sequence of actions and at the end what you want is that the actions output here reconstruct the actions input this might sound a little confusing but the core value of this is what you want is to reconstruct the actions of the trajectory taken given only the important states what does this mean in our example in our example 
here, this means if, you, if I have to go from here to here, right, and for example, I took the following path, this, 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 so right, right, down, down, right. This is, these were my action sequence. Now, if I only have the start, the end, and one state in between, let's say this one, right, then can I reconstruct what actions were taken? And if I erase the blue thing and I tell you I went from here via here to here, then y you could very much reconstruct the actions here. So this state here is a good candidate for being an important state. Whereas uh, if, if it were a different state, if it were, for example, if I told you I went from over here to here and then to here, you'd say, well, this could be either something like this or it could be a path like this, right? It could be many, many paths or like this. It could be many paths leading from here to here. So this state here is not probably not very important. So that's kind of how they um, how they learn which one are the important states via this encoding trajectories in an LSTM and trying to reconstruct the state, the actions taken in the trajectory given only the states that were deemed important by the LSTM. So that's how you train the LSTM to recognize important states. And once you've recognized the important states in a trajectory, you can then use those to learn a prior. So basically you ask, over all possible trajectories, which of the states are um, generally important? And that's how you end up with these blue states. All right. And then the last part is to connect the blue states. And that is fairly easily done in their approach, what they say is, all right, we have blue states, we should be pick one, and we do a random walk from it, right? Random walk, random walk, random walk. If we hit another blue state, like this one here, in the random walk, we simply say, well, they're probably neighbors. So we do this a bunch of times. If you hit the blue states, of course, without hitting another blue state first, um, then you connect the two in a graph. So these would be connected. These would probably be connected. What we ended up uh, at the beginning, right? You have this graph. Um, maybe these two are connected and so on. So this gives you this world graph. And now you end up with a set of important states and connections between them that tell you which ones are easily reachable from each other. So you can train the manager on that. You can train the worker, as we said before, to you simply select two close by states, train it to go from one to the other. Um, that way the worker will learn that. So in essence, that's how they, they do it. You can look at the experiments themselves. Um, they show that this basically transfers. So if you train like this, pre-train, then you can give more specific and more complicated tasks. And this will this will rapidly accelerate the learning of this. Um, yeah, look at the experiments if you have time. That was it for me. Thank you for listening.